Hey guys, it's Gav here. Just real quick, here's say hi, Sai. Hi. Say hi to YouTube. You have anything to say? Anything profound? Nothing profound today. Did you print anything today on the 3D printer? Okay. You got chores to do. Hey guys, pop in there. I just want to show you something funny. Um, not funny, but funny. The police are absolutely desperate for your approval. Hey guys, I see you in there. So. Have you noticed this? There's a pattern. If you want, if you see Facebook page and stuff, the police are completely desperate for your approval. Hey, y'all, I see you in there. What's up? Happy Saturday. Look, so down in Nevada, people are showing up. The prison staff down there at Nevada Southern, uh, they're, they're freaking out. They're super paranoid. Even though there's a peaceful protest, people are camping out. Head over to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash callmegav to keep up with that. And if you can get down to Nevada, it's nice and warm down there. Uh, about two hours out of Vegas, or maybe it's an hour and a half, Pahrump, Nevada, go there. All right? But what I wanted to show you is something a little different right now. And I'm going to flip the camera here. Look at this post on Facebook. Show you this. Let's read this. It's from the Cul Culpeper Police Department, which is in Virginia. All right. Okay. Here's what it says. I'm going to read it to you. Do you flash your headlights to warn oncoming motorists of law enforcement ahead? What if that driver is wanted for murder that just occurred? Maybe they just robbed a person, burglarized a business, raped someone, or were involved in a domestic assault. They could be transporting heroin or other drugs. No one wants a traffic ticket, but traffic stops do more than enforce traffic violations. They help law enforcement protect our communities through criminal interdiction. Um, are you guys serious right now? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of posts like this, right? I'm seeing a lot of posts because the fact is when we are speaking out, we're speaking out, we're using our voices, guys. And it has a profound effect when we use our voices, when we show up, when we rally, when we peacefully protest, okay? So what these police departments are doing is they're desperate for support because they can only live with themselves if they have people telling them they're heroes as they go out and extort and abuse and arrest and, and violate people. And the thing is, the popular society, that's what we've been taught, right? The police are protecting us. Here's what's happening. They're losing, they're losing that because they've abused for so freaking long that they're losing that respect and so they're tr they're desperately like they're grabbing for it right because they're realizing that they're losing people's respect because they're not respectable people our police have become extortioner thugs and we're starting to treat them as such which is what we should do now don't get me wrong we shouldn't be we shouldn't be hateful we shouldn't be violent we should simply use our mouth and say what you do is not okay and so people are all over this post and they're saying this is total nonsense right sure absolutely whenever you can warn somebody that there's an extortioner criminal who's going to rob you at the point of a gun up ahead you should warn them because that's what an officer does who stops people at the point of a gun and by force writes them fines for crimes that aren't actually crimes. And then if that person doesn't pay, guys, a, a speeding ticket is punishable by death if you don't pay. People scoff at me for this. If you don't pay that speeding ticket, they will take away your permit to drive that they had no right to give you in the first place. If you drive without that, they will stop you. And then they will try to take you to jail at the point of a gun. And if you try to exercise your right to be free, they will put you in a box or in a cage. End of story. And if you try and defend yourself, they will shoot you. Every infraction in this nation is punishable by death if you stand up for your rights. You know, I saw like people in the Patriot community and stuff and people that are distracted and confused by faction yesterday and they were all like, oh, it's Cinco de Mayo. And they were kind of making fun of, of Mexican independence. Now I know that Cinco de Mayo is not technically Mexican independence day, but it's kind of celebrating their, their victory, right? And, and I said, this is stupid guys. You're all like, oh, the Mexicans, they just want to come here. I got news for you. All the Mexicans don't just want to come to America because it's the promised land. In fact, frequently they come here and they leave and they're blown away by how unjust and corrupt and extortionists we are and the ridiculous laws we have. Everything's illegal in America. And we know it is. Now, I'm not saying Mexico's not corrupt and not got lots of problems, but the fact is they have a third of their people, a third less per capita in prison. That's, let me rephrase that. America has three times more people per capita in prison than Mexico. The Mexican people think 
in many ways more free than we do. They're not always worried about violating some petty rule because they're not always running around killing their people and locking them in prisons for the smallest of human infractions. That doesn't mean Mexico doesn't have tyranny, right? It just means that we're not actually free here. The fact is the people of Mexico have more freedom than we do. And all this ideology that says, oh, they just want to come here and take our freedom and our stuff, right? They want to take advantage of how free we are. That's just nonsense. All that is is people looking for a distraction so they can ignore the fact and live in nationalism and wave their banners and pretend, pretend that their fascist state is free so that they don't have to do something real. They don't have to speak out like we're doing here, right? They don't have to speak out like our people on the ground, my brothers and, and Kelly Stewart's down there, John Lamb's down there. I got a whole bunch of, of friends down there in Nevada right now, and I'm probably going to be packing up and heading down there the beginning of this week. I'm working on getting things in order now. And we're camping out outside that prison, not just because of what they did to Ammon Bundy. We're camping out outside that prison and rallying against all the prison abuse. And you know what happened last night, guys? The prison, get this, the prison down there at Nevada Southern, okay, they were saying that as long as these protesters are here, the prison's going to stay in lockdown. Here's the secret. This is a CCA for-profit prison. Look at the undercover documentary that was done on CCA prison. That's pretty amazing. Uh, terrible abuse happens inside these, and they also treat their employees terribly. So they're like paranoid, freaking out. They got like guards hiding in the bushes and like binoculars on us and everything down there. And what's happening down there is they said, oh, as long as the protesters are here, it's going to be in lockdown. Guess what? The prisoners inside the prison, they heard that we were out there rooting for them to stop being abused. All of them. We said it's not okay. The prisoners started protesting inside the prison. So last night, the prisoners inside the prison started standing up. And this is, they can't stay in lockdown that long because the prisoners kind of go into revolt, right? But they did it even further. They were peaceful. Inside the prison, the prisoners, and we don't know how many, but a fairly large portion of them, it sounds like, the prisoners refused to eat dinner. They started protesting inside the prison because it was in lockdown for this stupid fake reason. In lockdown, they took the lockdown away this morning, okay? When people use their voice, even in prison, they have power. They have power. Your words have power. Our actions have power. And you know what? Even flashing the headlights at the guy to warn him that there's an extortioner down the road, even that has power. Okay? Hope you can get out there, Ted, and all you guys. If you want information, go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash callmegav. If, uh, if you guys want to pitch in and help with some fuel expenses or kind of help out with our logistics expenses for getting things down there, you can, uh, you can pitch in a few bucks in the super chat here. You can also uh, PayPal me, uh, paypal.me slash S-E-I-M. And you know what? I'm going anyhow. But if you can't make it and you want to help people out, you know, find somebody that's going and pitch in and help. We need, this isn't about 3%. This isn't about Democrat or Republican or Patriot. This is about human rights. It's about justice. And it's about truth. No human being should be treated this way whether they've been convicted in a fake court, whether they've been convicted in a real court, whether like Ammon, they haven't even been convicted of anything and they've been in jail for 18 months. No human being should be treated like this. I don't care who you are or what you've done. You're not an animal. And I refuse to treat human beings like trash. All right? This... This is what I wanted to talk about, the desperate police in America. Guys, when we shame them, we don't have to be unkind, but we can tell them. It's loving to tell someone what you're doing is wrong, right? When you have an intervention or you talk to a family member because they're, they're making bad choices, that's loving them. When you go up to a police officer and you say, hey, stop extorting people, stop abusing people, you're not protecting your community, you're, you're extorting your community. When you do that, you're loving your neighbor. When you show up in prison and support people that are being abused, you're loving your neighbor. When you speak the truth, you're loving your neighbor. Lift out the hand, up your hands and have compassion on people. And call out these ridiculous 
police departments that are out there trying to pretend they're heroes because they know they're extortioners and they're trying to get people to pat them on the back for their extortion and their abuse. Stop letting people in your community think that they're being protected by these guys with their with their secret unmarked cars trying to generate revenue for their crony friends and with their with their private prisons and, and their sheriffs that'll back them up and let them get away with murder. It's not okay. We can't be silent. All right, guys, I'm going to run. I'm trying to kind of get the RV loaded, get things ready to go. I hope to see some of you guys down there on the ground, camping out, protesting. Let's make this the biggest prison reform protest ever. Let's get down there. Let's spread the word. Facebook.com slash callmegav. We win by humility, truth, repentance, loving our neighbor, and stepping up and 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 not just sitting on our couch, all right? So I'm going to be heading down to Nevada here pretty soon to stand up against the Nevada Southern Prison on that march, the march against Nevada Southern, but it's not just about that prison. It's about all the prison and justice abuse all over. It's time to start drawing attention to the people being abused. Head over to my Facebook page, call me Gav, facebook.com slash call me Gav. Join the event over there. It's right at the top of my page. And if you want to, if you want to help out, if you want to help us out with with uh, logistical expenses and stuff for my team, and you want to pitch in a few bucks or something, uh, PayPal.com slash sign. Pay, excuse me, PayPal.me slash s e i m. Or you can also go to my website, CallMeGav.com. Just throwing that out there because otherwise people will ask later. Speak, stand, unite, come together, love your neighbor, liberty. Out.